We are going to call this regular meeting of the Martin County School Board to order. We will now have Reverend Bob McDonald from the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of the Treasure Coast say an opening prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Your head and to quiet and calm the world inside your head, I invite you to assume that position for this moment of calm and centering. We call upon our highest power, the greatest good and better angels and values we believe in, power and value that have guided us from childhood. The best in us we know was planted by people like us who cared about our growth and wanted opportunities for us. For our children and youth, we want opportunity and growth in mind and heart. May we be inviters of curiosity and questioning and open-mindedness so that those in our charge one day are grateful for the guidance they got and pass it on and our deepest thanks for those who are awed by children and youth and want for them more. Amen. Superintendent Maine, members of the board and Martin County community, please welcome the Crystal Lake Elementary Choir and the Bouncing Ballers under the direction of Miss Bree Bennett. The choir will be performing Fruit Cannon, then they will turn things over to the Bouncing Ballers, who will be performing a series of rhythms with basketballs to the song In the Wild.
Thank you so much for sharing your talents with us. You all did an amazing job. Great job, everyone. Mrs. Fall, will you please call the roll? Mr. Dieter Lizzie? Here. Mrs. Roberts? Here. Mrs. Powers? Here. Mrs. Pritchett? Here. Mrs. Russell? Here. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda with the following items added? 7.05, 18.13, 18.14, items updated 3.02, 7.04, Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Mr. DiTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. I have a motion by Ms. Roberts and a second by Ms. Powers. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do I have any board member discussion this evening? Seeing none, we will move on to our recognitions. Probably. There's chairs up here. There are some chairs down front. If the people in the back would like to come forward, please do so. First, we have Schools of Excellence recognition. Dr. Riviotto, would you like to come forward? and Superintendent Maine. On March 27th, the Florida State Board of Education approved a measure that designated the schools of excellence for the 22-23 academic school year. This designation is awarded to those schools whose school grade calculation is in the 80th percentile or higher for at least two of the last three school years. The Florida Legislature established the Schools of Excellence program in 2017 under House Bill 7069 as an initiative to recognize and reward Florida's highest performing schools. The program encourages continuous improvement and provides administrative flexibility to the state's top schools so they can continue to provide the highest quality of education to students. As I announce the schools, if there is a representative present, please stand to be recognized. The following schools have been designated as schools of excellence for the 2022-2023 academic year. Palm City Elementary School, Jensen Beach Elementary School, <laughs> Bessie Creek Elementary School, <laughs> Hidden Oaks Middle School, Jensen Beach High School, and Clark Advanced Learning Center. Congratulations to each of these amazing school communities. Thank you. Next, we have our Cognia accreditation renewal. Dr. McMahon and Dr. George, would you like to come forward? Good evening, Superintendent Main, Madam Chair, and members of the board. My name is Dr. Paige McMahon. I'm joined today by Dr. Deborah George and Diana Weinbaum of Cognia. And we are here to celebrate our reaccreditation status. It was our distinct pleasure to lead our district through this accreditation process. We learned a lot. It was a wonderful opportunity to collaborate with our school leaders, district leaders, and other stakeholder groups. And I'd like to turn it over to Ms. Weinbaum, Senior Director of Cognia Southeast Region. Thank you so much. Superintendent Main, your community, and your entire board here today. Cognia has a long history in Martin County, dating back to 1947, when Martin County High School became the first accredited school in your district. When we first offered district-wide accreditation, Martin jumped at the opportunity and has held this position since 2009. This commitment is shown in your positive culture, supportive learning environments, and your comprehensive initiative to establish a clear and achievable strategic plan 
to guide the district's progress in continuous improvement efforts. Accreditation from Cognia is a valuable mark of distinction recognized around the globe. I'm honored to represent the largest education improvement organization in the world as I present your district accreditation renewal through June of 2030. Congratulations, Superintendent Maine, and your entire community, as this is quite an accomplishment. It would be our honor if you would join us for a picture, please. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you, Dr. George and Dr. McMahon, and to all the district staff for all of your hard work and dedication during our accreditation process. Next, we have our retirement recognitions. Ms. Armstrong, would you like to come forward? Good evening, Madam Chair, Superintendent Maine, and members of the board. It is my absolute honor and privilege to be here tonight to recognize two employees that are retiring and I would like to take a moment to invite the principal up to the um, dais here for Felix Williams Elementary School and um, Kim Grubbs as well. So. I'll let you do the honor. Good afternoon, Superintendent Maine and board members. Thank you for the honor to speak today about Candy Gilbert. So Candy is our beloved extended day manager at FAWI. And if you did not know, Candy has been in the Martin County School District for 32 years. And she began as the extended day manager at Jensen Beach Elementary, but she's been at FAWI since 1994. And if you did not know, uh, Candy was the recipient of the County Non-Instructional Employee of the Year in 2001. So at Felix Williams Elementary, we say that Fowey is truly a family. So Candy is a longtime member of this family, and she's also a good friend. When we have staff members that celebrate special milestones or celebrations, Candy's always there to celebrate and support them. And one of the greatest things about Candy is that she makes meaningful connections with our families and our community. She has many extended day counselors that work for her, and many of her employees have been in extended day as kindergartners at FAWI and have gone through FAWI, and now they have returned to work for her. So it is a very special bond. And not only does she watch our children and keep them safe after hours, she also offers art clubs, homework clubs, games, and many different activities. So she makes it a priority that the kids, not that they're not only being taken care of, but that they're learning new skills, becoming better students, and becoming better people. So parents in the community appreciate all that she does for their children. 
and I know we appreciate her very much. So she is a very special member, like we said, of the Fowey family, and it's really hard to imagine going to Fowey and not seeing Candy. Um, but the Fowey family is here and will always be here to celebrate with her. Um, and she is always so supportive of us and our students, so we look forward to celebrating her. Um, congratulations. I just wanted to say thank you for all the connections that I've made, and this is going to be a really, really hard last few weeks of school for me. <laughs> if you'd like, you could come forward, and we could get a picture taken with you. Bring all those flowers. So there's another one that's right after this. She wants the manager to. What are we doing this time? She's retired. She's been doing this at ASU. You just got to do it time. She's got all her family. Okay. We can't get out of here. You're her mama. You got to be next to her. I got you. She brought a cheering section. I love it. Here's the red carpet. Goodness. That's okay. No, go ahead. It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Not a problem. Let's squeeze it in. You're okay. We can see over your heads. Again, the middle. I find her joy inspiring. So next up, I would like to invite Julie Sessa up here because she's going to start um, a, um, a recognition retirement as well because she has a personal story. And I'd also like to invite Lori Vogel up here. Hello. So good evening, Superintendent Main, members of the board, Chair. Um, we'd like to recognize someone who is an absolute hero at Jensen Beach High School. He has... Lori has, I don't know how many pages, in large font to read to you this evening about Coach Mike Sautel. Mike, you want to come down and bring Lisa? Good afternoon, Superintendent Maine, Madam Chair, and members of the school board. It is my pleasure this afternoon to honor Michael Sotel. Mike began his tenure in the Martin County School District in August of 1989. In his 35 years at the Martin County School District, Mike has taught elementary, middle, and high school physical education. Mike has made it his mission and passion to prepare our students physically and emotionally to meet the demands of our ever-evolving world. Mike has coached volleyball for 25 years in the Martin County School District. He began his volleyball career at South Park High School in 1999 and then created the program when Jensen Beach High School opened in 2004. While at Jensen Beach High School, he earned five state championships, 10 regional championships, 14 district championships. He has been the Florida High School Athletic Association Coach of the Year six times and the Dairy Farmers Coach of the Year five times. He's been the Coach of the Year for the Palm Beach Post, the TC Palms, and the Treasure Lake Conference 14 times. Mike leaves behind a huge legacy at Jensen Beach High School. 2025, next school year, will be the first year since Jensen Beach has opened its doors that we will not have a Sawtelle on our campus as all of Mike's children are Falcon alumni. I would also like to take a moment to recognize Mrs. Lisa Sautel, 
Mike's wife, who has shared her husband with us for the past, for the past 29 years. Being a coach's wife is never easy, and we appreciate your support of Jensen Beach High School in the volleyball program. <laughs> Undoubtedly, Mike's impact on our community will not retire with him. He has built a legacy that will carry on for years. He and his family are integral parts of our Falcon family. He will be dearly missed by all of us. We, miss, we wish Mike all the best as he begins the next chapter of his life. And Mr. Wow. Costello oh, said, <laughs> you need this, <laughs> oh. but you have to hold it here. Hold it there. Don't hold his wings or feet. Mm. Congratulations. Just want to say thank you. Um, I've, the Lord has truly blessed me for the last 35 years um, in everything I've done. I've been blessed with wonderful players, wonderful coaches, wonderful administration. And the biggest thing I'm going to leave behind is the fact that we were able to touch so many lives in our journey. So thank you. Congratulations. Best wishes. Congratulations to both of you in your retirement, and we thank you for your many years of service in the Martin County School District. Our next recognition is for the Boys and Girls Club Youth of the Year. Mr. Shazo, would you like to come forward? Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Superintendent Maine. The Boys and Girls Club of Martin County's annual Youth of the Year event recognizes the incredible achievements of some of its most distinct and inspiring members. Youth are celebrated for exhibiting leadership and support to their peers and pursuing education, training, and career paths that will contribute to a better world. It's my pleasure to bring forward Ms. Megan Sherry, Director of Marketing and External Affairs for the Boys and Girls Club of Martin County so she can present our Youth of the Year winner. While the Boys and Girls Club is proud and thankful for the more than 600 children in our four clubs and the more than 6,000 children that we impact through our programs, the Youth of the Year candidates have earned this special honor. In addition to being our Youth of the Year, Joe Mar has won the Character Counts Joe Cordick Award, and I would like to invite you all to join us in that recognition ceremony on April 30th at the Palm City Community Center. And without further ado, I would like to introduce you to the Boys and Girls Club's Martin County Youth of the Year, Joe Marzalaya. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joe Marzalaya, and I'm the Youth of the Year for the 2024 year of the Port St. Leonard, uh, I started at the Port St. Leonard Boys and Girls Club, but now I'm the Youth of the Year for the Martin County School District. I've been attending the Boys and Girls Club since I was 10 years old, and I'm happy to say I'm still a regular attending member today. The BGC has helped me become the role model I am today by giving me many opportunities and it has helped me become, sorry, it has helped me through all the, uh, through all the opportunities the BGC offers me. I pride myself on inspiring future leaders through 
everything the club has offered me. The term role model does not mean being perfect or being better than anyone else. Instead, it means achieving new heights and always being there for others. Throughout my club experience, I have experienced many stages of development, which have led me to become, which have led me to view things in many different perspectives. Perspectives I gained while observing various staff and friends come and go with the BGC. Although my mom originally forced me to go to BGC, I, <laughs> I quickly realized all the benefits the club has to offer. Now that I have a job, it is harder to attend a club as much as I would like to. However, I still make time each day before going to work to stay involved. I am also the captain of the Peer Forward team at Martin County High School. This allows me to help other seniors apply to college, and if they do not want to go to college, we help them define and create their post-secondary plans. Being a part of this team has also allowed me to visit New York and California before I turned 18. This was an eye-opener. I have also been able to travel to, to around the country to places like Atlanta and Washington, D.C. through the Boys and Girls Club's exploration tours. During these trips, I was able to tour colleges and see sites I would have never even known about. Today, it is easy to talk about these things due to my experiences. When I first came to the Boys and Girls Club, to the Boys and Girls Club of Port Salerno, I did not know the world of opportunities the future held for me. I went from the kid receiving contributions to the kid making contributions to the community and youth. Thank you. <laughs> when I help the younger kids at Boys and Girls Club, the reaction on their faces is priceless. The big smiles from ear to ear tell me that I am making a difference by sharing the opportunities I had when I was their age. The Boys and Girls Club even gave me my first job. I was one of the very first kids to ever work with Chef Dan in the Fork in the Road program back in 2020. The experiences the club gave me created an impact so big in my life, it helped me plan my dream career in the medical field with a concentration in orthopedic surgery. The main reason why I chose this field of study is to continue helping others. Experience, impact, influence. These are the three pillars of leadership Boys and Girls Club have taught me. Now my goal is to teach it to a younger generation, one cat at a time. Thank you. Jomar, I was able to be there the night that you won this award, and I was impressed with how you carried yourself and how you spoke so eloquently. You are going to excel in everything that you do, and the board wishes you nothing but the best for your future endeavors. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Our final recognition is the Martin County School District Elementary Science and Engineering Fair Special Award winners. Ms. Borges, would you like to come forward? Good evening, Chair Russell, board members, and Superintendent Maine. My name is Jennifer Borges, and I am the science coordinator for the Martin County School District. Today, I have the honor of recognizing the outstanding accomplishments of our students who participated in the Elementary Science and Engineering Fair held on February 7th, 2024. This event showcased the ingenuity, creativity, and hard work of over 200 projects from our young scientists and engineers from across the district. Before I announce our special guests, I would like to extend a special thank you to the Education Foundation of Martin County for their generous sponsorship of both the elementary and regional STEM fairs. I would also like to thank the Children's Museum of the Treasure Coast for awarding students with a BOGO certificate. Their support has been instrumental in making these events possible and empowering our students to pursue their passion for science and engineering. Firstly, I would like to recognize the overall best score for individual projects. 
This award goes to Tyla Sprin from Palm City Elementary for her exceptional project, Stop Right There Erosion. Her dedication to scientific inquiry and innovation is truly commendable. Talis, can you come up, please? <laughs> Next, let us recognize the overall best score for team projects. This honor is bestowed upon Raya Berkeley and Penny Dabrowski from Felix A. Williams Elementary School for their collaborative efforts in what's the hype of, with electrolytes. <laughs> their teamwork, problem solving skills, and creativity have set a high standard for excellence in our district. Can you guys come up please? Finally, we cannot overlook the remarkable achievements in class projects. I've extended a challenge to every class from kindergarten to fifth grade, fifth grade across all elementary schools within the district to participate in a class project. Witnessing the incredible experiences provided by these dedicated teachers has truly been astounding. The award for the overall best score in class project goes to Mrs. Berkeley and her fourth grade class for their outstanding project, Cotton, the Fabric of Our Lives. <laughs> their dedication. <laughs> Finally, I'm delighted to announce the best performing school in this year's District STEM Fair. This prestigious honor goes to Port Salerno Elementary for their exceptional achievements across all categories. Their commitment to excellence in STEM education is a testament to the hard work and dedication of all their students, teachers, and staff. Thank you. Congratulations to you all. Keep up the great work. Okay, moving on, we have our student representative, Austin Connolly. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm gonna start today off with Jensen Beach High School, High School, but before I do, there are a lot of names for me to read today, so if I mispronounce any, I apologize. The Falcon softball team traveled last week to Kissimmee Classic and competed against some of the best teams in the state. Pitcher Mallory Wheeler was named the Blue Bracket Offensive Player of the Tournament. Over the course of four games, Mallory had nine hits with four doubles and three home runs, seven RBIs, and scored six times. She also pitched every pitch over A1 for over four games. The women's choir from Jensen Beach High School sang in Washington, D.C. April 5th at the Heritage Festival National Choral Competition. The choir earned a gold rating for their performance and placed in first in the women's choir division. The Jensen Beach High School Key Club and Leadership class recently teamed up with Junior Achievements High School Heroes program. Our members taught financial literacy lessons to all kindergarten through second grade classes at FAWE. South Fork High School. The following students will be inducted into the National Thespian Society on May 3rd. 
Each student listed above has put in at least 100 hours of quality work in theater and will be officially joining the ranks of Troop 4437. Samuel Bagwell, Holly Beers, Kate Cannon, Natalie Carballo, Crystal Garber, Peyton Johnson, Evie Parsley, Evelyn Raybeyer, and Madison Waters. Yvonne Elmore came in fourth place at the FFA District Ornamental Horticulture Demonstration for her Organic Fertilizer Enterprise. Yvonne Elmore and Haley Lungen both earned their FFA state degree, the second highest honor an FFA member can earn, and will be recognized this summer at the 96th Florida FFA State Convention. South Fork High School Benefit Concert was recently held to raise funds for fellow classmates facing homelessness. Using their talents and creativity, these students generated $500 to support their peers in need. This heartwarming movement showcases the passion and drive within our youth to make a positive impact in their community. Let's congratulate our 2023-24 South Fork High School winners in the Regional Scholastic Arts Competition. Our gold winners are Daphne Dalton, Julia Greaves, and Grace Wang with two artworks. Julia has been nominated for an American Vision Award. They will move on to the national competition. Out of over 4,000 entries, these students' work have been selected to be in the regional exhibition. I'm thrilled to recognize Natalie Agora, a talented photographer and member of the South Fork High School yearbook team, for her outstanding achievement in the Spring 2024 Digital Contest hosted by the Florida Scholastic Press Association. Natalie's captivating Florida nature photo has earned her the prestigious title of an All Florida Best of the Best winner in this competitive contest. Her keen eye for detail and artistic vision truly shine through in her work. Pat Phillips, a beacon of knowledge and innovation and education, started her journey at, w at WES in 1994. Pat dedicated 13 years to shaping young minds before bringing her passion for reading to South Fork High School. As a media specialist for over a decade, she's been the guiding force behind the 3D Tech Club, inspiring students to explore and create. Respected DAC representative and the recipient of the 2002 WES Teacher of the Year and the 2003 Martin County Teacher of the Year Awards. Pat's commitment to excellence is unwavering. Join us in celebrating her remarkable 29-year legacy in education. South Fork High School is proud to shine through the spotlight on their incredible assistant principals. Mr. Grieger, Ms. Hurd Tesson, Ms. McMurray, and Ms. Reese. Principal Thompson couldn't be prouder of her exceptional team. Quote, I'm honored to work with such an amazing team who cares so deeply for our students, staff, and school community. They are a huge part of what makes Bulldog Nation so special, and I'm so lucky to collaborate with them. End quote. Martin County High School. The first certification year of the MCHS Criminal Justice Academy was a huge success, with 16 out of our 19 students passing their 911 Public Safety Telecommunicator certification. We would like to congratulate the following students. Carolyn Bevan, Michael Coulter, Sean D. Agostini, Anthony Fano, Olivia Grohr, Taylor Hanrihan, Aiden Crystal, Tiffany Miller, Mary Morales Garcia, Taylor Murray, Gianna Porcelli, Reese Potter, Ariana Rivera, Jaden Rosenberg, Sawyer Skinner, and Remington, Remington Trinity. In late March, Opus competed in the Heritage Festival in Nashville, Tennessee. They were outstanding and took first place. Additionally, on Friday, April 5th, members of the chorus completed, competed in the state solo and ensemble. Congratulations to the following performers. Receiving superior ratings, Abigail Bain, Sydney Brewer, Jacob Crosby, Katie Dunnell, Mallory Goddard, Stefan Hersey, Yesko Mateo Andreas, Louis Medina, Zoe Mixer, Colin Moore, Gisel Rez Sorez, and Victoria Seagott. Advanced tre treble ensembles, Cora it's Cora Acevedo, Abigail Bean, Jill Dunnell, Katie Dunnell, Chloe Hillman, Kathy Juan Santiago, Addison Kniss, Maria Marcos, Yesco Mateo Andreas, Ella Thomas, and Ava Warbin. For solos, Zoe Mixner and Mally Goddard, and the student conductor, Louis Medina. Receiving excellent ratings for solos, Katie Dunnell, Landon Friend, and Addison Kniss. Martin County High School students Nira Goyle and Nina Goyle competed in the State Science and Engineering Fair of Florida this week. 
Nira earned second place in the behavioral and social science category and was selected to represent the Martin County School District at the International Science and Engineering Fair in Los Angeles in May. Nina earned fourth place in the animal science category as her first year competing in the senior division. Congratulations, Nira and Nina Goyle. Student athlete Dakota Moberg was named TC Palms Player of the Year for girls soccer. Art student Chloe Kelly was selected for the National K-12 Ceramic Exhibition at NCECA. Chloe's piece was awarded the Kansas City Art Institute Scholarship Invitation, Alfred Theodore A. Randall Memorial Scholarship, Griffin Grin Award, Plith Gallery Award for Ceramic Design, and the Ingrid Mahan Foundation Scholarship. We are thrilled to celebrate our student artists who are Gold Key, Silver Key, and Honorable Mention recipients for the 2024 Scholastic Art Awards for Palm Beach and Martin Counties. Gold Key Awards have been presented to Tetiana Bilkun, Hannah Hauser, Lily Larson, Sophia Mestrin, Brooke Vanderwan, Kara, and Kara Waltarsdorf. Gold Key artwork will be in an exhibition at the Armory Art Center in West Palm Beach from April 15th to 27th and will go on to compete nationally. Thank you. Thank you, Austin. Now we will have our district update with Jennifer DeShazo. Hello again, school board members, Superintendent Main. It's my pleasure to bring you the April school district update. The Martin County School District hosted the 48th annual Music in Our Schools concert event at Martin County High School on March 21st. The program coincided with the National Association for Music Education's Music in Our Schools Month, with this year's theme being I See Me in Music Education. Our annual Music in Our Schools concert showcases the amazing musical talents of our students from all MCSD schools under the guidance of our dedicated music educators. Let's take a look at this year's concert put on by talented students and educators here in Martin County. You are going to be treated to a free show tonight that will leave you in amazement and you'll forget all about Taylor Swift after tonight. Welcome to the 48th annual Music in Our Schools concert hosted by the Martin County School District. The Music in Our Schools concert is a testament to the dedication and hard work of our students as well as the unwavering dedication of our incomparable music educators. You are going to experience everything in the music programs in the Martin County School District from the elementary through the middle school and the high school.
did this in my first music in our school, so it was pretty fun. Um, I was in band, and uh, it was just like a really great experience. I loved the little kids. I thought they were amazing. I thought they were perfect. And I was really excited to watch them. So honestly, it was such a nostalgic moment for me. Seeing all the grades come together was really fun. This is also my first music in the school. So it's really fun to just kind of be here. And two educators who are instrumental in our annual music in our schools event um, will be retiring at the end of this school year. Miss Donna Bochsik from Jensen Beach Elementary School and Mr. Joe Flanagan, who is a former school leader and administrator in the district and also traditionally serves as our MC of the event. Um, they've both been instrumental in the continued success of this, so please join me in congratulating both of them on retirement with a round of applause. Students from Palm City Elementary School, coached by teacher Amanda Moore, recently placed third out of 19 teams at the state level Odyssey of the Mind competition in Orlando. Odyssey of the Mind is an academic competition that teaches students how to develop the use of their natural creativity to become problem solvers. Students who participate in Odyssey of the Mind learn about teamwork, budgeting, time management, public speaking, and so much more. Students from Jensen Beach Elementary School also participated in this year's state level competition after both teams qualified during our recent regional event. Currently, only elementary students in the Martin County School District participate, but middle school students will be invited to compete in Odyssey of the Mind beginning next school year. Please join us in congratulating our students. And as Dr. Riviota shared, I'm going to congratulate our schools of excellence once again. Um, the State Board of Education and Florida Statutes designate a school as a school of excellence if its percentage of possible points earned in the school grade calculation is in the 80th percentile or higher for schools comprised of the same grade level groupings for at least two of the last three school years. Being designated as a school of excellence holds significant importance. Um, in our pursuit of becoming the top performing school district in the state. So once again, congratulations to the schools you see displayed. We are very, very proud of your work. And until next time, you can find us wherever you scroll. Thank you, Jen. Mr. Main, our superintendent's update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first, would like to thank the Crystal Lake Elementary Bouncing Ballers team one more time. They did a phenomenal job. Really appreciate that. <clears throat> and uh, they definitely will be attending the superintendent's kickoff this year and getting an invite there because that was very motivational and appreciate that performance. I'd like to first start off by uh, welcoming to our school district our new Director of Student Services, Dr. Catherine Perandozzi. If you'll please stand and be recognized by the district. Dr. Perandozzi joins us with over 30 years of exceptional student education and student services um, experience, most recently with Baltimore, Maryland, Broward County Schools, and Indian River County Schools. There are times in your career where uh, you, know, you have to make a lot of good hires and important decisions, and I believe that the team made an excellent choice in Dr. Perandozzi uh, in the amount of experience that she has and collectively as a whole um, what she will bring to the table and I know she has already been meeting with our student services team they've already been out to dinner she's already been attending meetings on her own time just because she wanted to be able to hit the ground running and so I'm very excited to welcome you to our team thank you ma'am We want to continue to publicize our town hall meetings. Uh, this month, the district will be hosting the last two town hall events of the 23-24 school year. The first of the two will be held on Thursday at Murray Middle School at 5.30 p.m., while the second and last town hall will be held on April 25th at 6 p.m. at Warfield Elementary School. Uh, this was a rescheduled town hall from Indian Town Middle School. There was a, another event being held at Warfield the same evening, and we wanted to make sure that the community 
community of Indian Town had proper representation and the ability to be able to attend and get all of their questions answered and to feel that they were uh, properly represented. And so uh, Chrissy Smith at Warfield Elementary has uh, offered to host the next town hall for Warfield uh, for Indian Town. So we please encourage our Indian Town members of the community to come out and join us. Uh, these sessions are designed to allow our staff to engage directly with members of our local community about issues impacting education. If you are able to do so, we encourage you to go to our website ahead of time to submit your questions so that our staff can prepare. And we would be more than happy again to have a true town hall series and answer your questions. We've heard a lot about student success tonight, and I'm really excited uh, when we're able to recognize our students. We do have some local STEM fair winners for our middle schools, so we'd like to recognize those this evening. Last month, we told you about all of our elementary, middle, and high school students who recently competed in the Martin County Regional Science and Engineering Fair. You, we were able to recognize some of our elementary students earlier this evening. Those students have since went on to compete at the state level, and I'm proud to announce our students have once again gone above and beyond here in the Martin County School District. Students from Stewart Middle School, Murray Middle, Hidden Oaks Middle, Martin County High School, and South Fork High School represented the district, demonstrating outstanding talent, dedication, and ingenuity in the science and engineering fields. The district is proud to share that six teams finished in the top five in their categories. Additionally, Martin County High School senior Nira Goyle is advancing to the International Science and Engineering Fair, which is a huge, huge accomplishment. Congratulations to the following students as well. Honorable mention in category, Ahand Astana, South Fork High School, uncovering seasonal variation in algal growth. Recognition of project in category, Madeline Tuma, Hidden Oaks Middle School, Let Us Talk About Greenhouse. Fourth place in category, Brian Wang, Hidden Oaks Middle School, Where Are You, Vitamin C. Fourth place in category, Eliana Lavat, Stewart Middle School in St. Lucie Inlet Sand Deposition, Continued. Fourth place in category, Nina Goyle, as mentioned, Martin County High School, control of fall, army worm, a global pest using RNA interface and antisense. I cannot pronounce this word. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to skip it there, but thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> third place in category, Ethan Timmer and Matthew Jarrell, Stewart Middle School, aerodynamics of airfoils in a wind tunnel. I can go there as someone who has their pilot's license. Third place in category, Varun Singh, South Fork High School, a novel approach to waste recycling and robotic force sensing and image processing using deep convolutional neural network and second place in category Nira Goyle Martin County High School a review of the use and promo Ability of mental health apps by teenagers. Murray Middle School student Claire Rawlings earned a $50 cash award from the Florida Association of Science Supervisors and Heartland Regional Science and Engineering Fair for her project titled Electric vs. Bass. So we have some just outstanding, incredibly talented students here in the district, and we want to be able to showcase them and all of their hard work. There are countless hours of preparation and research that goes into these projects and we really appreciate their time and effort. Many of these students will oftentimes go on to continue their science research projects well into the college level. I want to thank our Cognia uh, Reaccreditation Committee and Re Review Board, particularly Dr. Uh, Deb George and Dr. Paige McMahon and Dr. Miller, who led the team here locally to make sure that all of our departments and the data that we needed for the Cognia to review for our next five years was approved. This is a huge accomplishment to lead the district into the next five years, which will ultimately take us into our strategic planning, which will then align with our next five years strategic planning cycle. So thank you very much for all of the hard work for all of our team here at the district and at our school sites that had to upload uh, countless amounts of data and narratives to make sure that we were prepared and successful. And last but certainly not least, I want to thank you to the board for all of your hard work in making sure that our AFSME and MCEA employees received raises this year. 
Uh, even during declining enrollment, you stood firm and bold in making sure that our employees and teachers received um, raises that, that are, are owed. And in total, AFSME received $1.9 million, MCEA $1.5 million, and non-bargaining, which is on the agenda tonight, for $650,000 for a total of over $4 million to, to our employees. And we will continue to push forward uh, to increase student enrollment here in the district and thereby giving our board an opportunity to put additional monies in the pockets of our teachers and our employees. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board for any of the other information only reports? All right, seeing none, we will move on. Currently, we do not have any, in, any board information share at this time, so we will go ahead and move on to public comment. Citizen input is vital to the improvement of our district. Most times, your remarks may be listened to without comment from the board members or superintendent. This does not mean they are heard with any less intensity or concern. Where appropriate, the superintendent and staff will investigate your comments and report back to you and the board with an answer. We thank you for taking the time and having the concern to make our district better. Your presentation to the board should not exceed three minutes. Letters or statements from others not present can be given to our clerk who will be sure that each school board member and the superintendent receive a copy. To keep our records straight and authentic, our policy does not permit you to read the statements of others into the record. First up, State, Principal uh, Stacy Schmidt. Good evening, Madam Chair, Mr. Superintendent, members of the board. I'm Stacy Schmidt, principal of Bestie Creek Elementary. I'm finishing up my fifth year as principal. I wanted to talk about the amazing year we've been having at Bestie Creek, growing our literacy expertise in the K-2 space and focusing on small group instruction in the 3-5 to five space. My belief is that we are once again going to see unprecedented growth all across every grade level and in every subgroup. We are always focused on improving and growing. We've implemented Spanish on our related arts wheel. We are a Cambridge school offering global perspectives to all students in K-5. to We have a motor skills lab for our K-2 to students to help create strong bodies built for better academic learning, and that's on our related arts wheel. And we will be improving our schedule to ensure additional hands-on science labs at every grade level, K to five, for next school year. We also have a house system where our kindergarten students and all students new to the school are sorted into their houses on their very first school day. And we are five houses in one school family. I would like to recognize our PTA for their support of all of my crazy ideas, like the big spinning wheel for sorting kids into houses, and also for having the biggest hearts and for giving back to other schools in the district as well. Thank you, PTA. Um, I wanted to say to businesses and families out there looking to support teachers in the coming weeks that Teacher Appreciation Week is May 6th through 10th. And I will tell you that every principal would appreciate any donation of fun things like small gift cards or food items for their staff. So pick your local school and drop off some special gifts. And finally, I wanted to thank the board and the district staff for opening up the opportunity for controlled open enrollment. We've had lots of interest and have been giving lots of tours and Bessie Creek really is a special unicorn and I really love every opportunity to meet with my new families and take a little tour and talk a little bit about the special things that we have happening at school. And I wanted you to know that in the midst of declining enrollment, I'm proud to say that Bessie Creek is projected to have over 50 additional students next year over this school year. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Manuel Gonzalez. Good evening, superintendent and board members. Being a successful swimmer takes dedication, hard work, self-discipline, perseverance, and being confident. I believe by waking up early, training, swimming, going to school, heading back to swimming, will be a valuable school 
to my success in life. Swimming can feel like you have hit a wall at times, much like this process has been able to ma- able to remain in our pool. But by learning how this process works and by commitment to swimming, this is teaching me lessons in and out of the pool. Right now, I would normally be swimming, but making sure we have a pool is priority because I like to, like so many others kids, are passionate about wanting to be an, an academically high achieving student and athlete. High school swim season begins in about three months. We need a head coach, assistant coaches, and captains. I also want the classroom to be open again in the morning and afternoons. Our morning practice time is 5.30 to 6.30, and our school does not begin until 8.20 a.m. I'm choice in the Martin County High School, and both of my parents work in the past. In the past, we were allowed to swim from 6 to 7.30. And when we were done, we, were, we would shower, eat breakfast, study, socialize, and get ready for school. There isn't much time to talk when you are in swim practice. So this time before school has allowed me to make friends. Since we are no longer allowed to be at the pool after 6.30, I purchased a gym membership for a place to go. My teammate has been taking me, but not all of my teammates can do this. It would be safer for all of us if we were able to swim longer and walk into school on time versus driving all over in the morning. Please revert back to the student being able to use a classroom in our school. It is a safer choice for us to be doing homework, exercising, and on campus versus sitting outside until school opens. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Katherine Rogers. Good evening, superintendent and board members. I've been a member of the Martin County swim team since sixth grade. I am now a sophomore. Being a swimmer takes year-round dedication, early morning practice, dry land practices, and starting at a black line on the bottom of the pool for hours. That will not be able to continue happening if the pool is shut down. My goal is to restore the pool and make it available in our community to serve students and parents that do not know how to swim. The pool is an asset for water safety, physical education, engineering competitions, job opportunities, and athletes ranging from young to old for multiple sports. I am hoping to work with district staff to develop a lifeguard certification class, swimming physical education, and learn to swim classes for elementary students. Initiating lifeguard certifications, the high school students would be able to assist in teaching younger students how to be safe around the water and learn to swim. Classes can be taught on pool maintenance, creating job opportunities and career paths in the future. The pool can host school competitions such as the cardboard boat races, which I loved competing in throughout elementary school. It would be beneficial to our STEM curriculum to include middle and high school students in construction cardboard boats. We can host other sports such as synchronized swimming, water polo, or allow other athletes to train and recover in our pool. Recently, the ROTC manager needed the pool, and if we had a pool manager, this could be scheduled accordingly. There is so much potential and missed opportunities at this facility. By opening the pool to all Martin County District students, you would attract more students to our district by supporting the pool. Thank you for your time. Thank you. (laughs) Kelly Coleman. Good evening. My name is Kelly Coleman and I'm a civics teacher at Hidden Oaks Middle School. I have been a teacher at Hidden Oaks for 23 years. I was hired by Dr. Frank Raffone, who always told me that when things became difficult to just hang on in the the education pendulum, we'll swing eventually and things will get better. I even saw him 15 years later and do you know what he said to me? Hang on, it will get better. Well, I'm here to tell you, I have been hanging on for 23 years, waiting to see change in the teaching profession. I've spent my entire profession hoping and praying to see change happen in Martin County. What change am I looking for? The relationship between this district and its teachers. I am here to say enough is enough. Everyone in America knows being a teacher is not easy. The challenges are draining. The demands are overwhelming. The students that enter my room are just not the same as when I started. My students come to me with many different needs. 
It is getting harder and harder to meet them due to the unrealistic expectation placed on teachers' shoulders by the school board and our state legislature. Unless you spend time in a teacher's classroom, no one will truly understand what it's like to walk in teachers' shoes, not only in Martin County, but throughout this country. I'm here to say enough is enough. I love my students. I love my school. I love my colleagues who are like my second family to me. I love my administrators. I love my community. What I do not love is the division between our school board and our teachers. Frankly, I'm sick and tired of it. It is time for change. The time has come for us to get on the same page. This is the only way this district will retain teachers and truly become number one in the state. I have been here long enough to tell all of you that actions speak louder than words. The message being sent to teachers is that the interests of the school board far outweigh the well-being of their employees. This is something I have never understood. If we all want what's best for our students, why do teachers feel they cannot trust their district? Why is our superintendent posting videos that divide us? Why is there a school board member on talk radio saying they're hoping and praying our union will not get to 60%? This is not a 2024 problem in this district. This has been a long-term problem and enough is enough. We need to be united. It is time for the Martin County School Board to show its teachers that they are on our side. There is no pep rally that will ever convince me that we are united until I see the actions of our school board and our district make the changes needed for this county to reach its full potential. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Emerson Beasley, you can hold your applause, please. Emerson Beasley. Hello, my name is Emerson Beasley, and I am a swimmer on the Martin County Tiger Sharks swim team. I am glad to hear that you decided to keep the pool open next school year, but I want to make sure it stays open until I am in high school and beyond for others after me. I would like to be able to do my sport just like football and baseball players get to. I keep asking my mom, I don't understand if there is enough money to fix if there isn't enough money to fix the pool, then how is there enough money to fill it in and build a building? Now you can all be, I know you can all be creative and come up with ways to utilize the pool to keep it open. Please think of kids like me and my teammates in your decision process. Don't let your legacy be that you took away our pool. Thank you. Thank you. Alana Beasley? My name is Alana Beasley. That was my daughter. You did a great job, Em. Um, she's my oldest of three children who attend um, Palm City Elementary School. Like her, I'm happy to hear that the school district has decided to keep the pool open for the upcoming school year. However, myself and the team want to ensure it remains open for all the years to come. I understand you all want to be fiscally responsible, but please be transparent and ethical with your plans on how to achieve this. As many of us stated at the last school board meeting, Sailfish Splash does not have room to accommodate our team or to absorb our swimmers on the existing teams there. Please be transparent and keep the flow of communication going with our coaches to ensure the pool can be utilized as the amazing resource that it is. It has the potential to offer even more programs to our community than it already does if we invest our time and energy wisely. Please do not let our kids down. Thank you. Karen Resiniti. Good evening, Madam Chair, School Board Members, and Superintendent Maine. My name is Karen Resiniti, educator of 40 years, 20 years with Martin County, and former MCEA president. I'm now retired. So I guess I'm just a taxpayer now. In 2022, I entered into an agreement with the Martin County School Board exercising our rights under the article of sick leave. It was approved. So why did this come into question in January and February of 2023? Why all of a sudden such a big deal? There were no incidents of any kind. Why? Because a newly elected school board member just didn't like it. 
The current president requested the same and was denied. A grievance was filed. The grievance hearing was held on December 12th of 2023. The decision of the arbitrator um, was rendered on March 19th of 2024. The MCA won this arbitration and the arbitrator directed the district to follow the same agreement as mine with some minor changes. It's worth noting that the language in this dispute did not cost the district one dime but I wonder how much this arbitration will cost the taxpayers. In 2017, the MCA and the Martin County School District went into impasse over teacher planning time. MCA achieved success for the merits of that argument and the language is now case law all over the state. It cost just over $4,000 for the writing of the legal opinion, which was six pages, billed at two and at one quarter days. In the most recent arbitration, MCA won. I would imagine the cost will be considerable as the written opinion is 42 pages. You can do simple math. And that will only be the cost for the arbitrator. What about the legal fees incurred by the district, or should I say the taxpayers? Interestingly enough, the school board increased their allocated funds to their attorneys from $100,000 in July of 23 to $200,000 on December 19th of 2023. Why? Currently, there's pending arbitration regarding the Western Zone supplements, which impacted 26 teachers. In October of 2022, the teachers filed a grievance regarding the decrease in the Western Zone supplement. It was denied at level three, and the teachers filed for arbitration. However, at the beginning of the 22-23 school year, the teachers agreed to a settlement. Yet, in November of 23, the current school board vice chair motioned to go to arbitration. It is now April of 24, and the board continues to delay the process. The arbitrator is quite bothered. Due to the delay, he required a down payment of $1,000 from each side. Why are, they waste, why are you wasting taxpayer dollars on nonsensical legal ballot, ballot battles? The district will lose this one, too. The school board should stick to their role in writing policy instead of focusing on culture wars. Keep politics out of the classroom. Focus on the students. Thank Stop you. attacking teachers. Leave our planning time alone. William Dorney. My name is Bill Dorney, and I'm one of many seniors who regularly use the high school pool. Years before I-95 was completed through Martin County, my wife and I found a retirement home for her parents in Stewart. It happened to be next door to the Crary family on Cardinal Way. One of the bridges to Hutchison Island is named in honor of Senator Carey and his family's contributions to early Martin County. Twelve years ago, the future of the Crary historic home was in question. My wife and I were able to purchase and donate the Crary home to the city of Stewart and her parents' names. Donna worked alongside the Historic Society, and the house was relocated to downtown Stewart next to the old feed store museum. The Dick Wells Aquatic Center has great value to Martin County. It was built to last for generations with its welded stainless steel coping and gutters. One pool isn't enough to handle the county's high schools, age group, and numerous other swimming programs. I lost my father to cancer when I was nine years old. Mom worked as a high school secretary and somehow managed to keep us in our home. My sister, brother, and I continued our swimming programs. Our coaches were our mentors and teammates, lifetime friends. I was able to earn a scholarship to Florida and swam for the Gators. My brother swam for Michigan. Over 15 years, I witnessed hundreds of students training at the Dick Wells Center before the sun rises in the first of two daily workouts. Many went on to swim in college. Many received financial assistance. The Martin County school system provided the facilities to make that happen, and we should all be proud of their accomplishments. I can only hope that future student athletes will have the same opportunities. Thank you for allowing me to address this audience. Thank you. Rich Showborn. Good evening, uh, board members. Uh, I am a master swimmer at the Martin County High School pool 
and I'm here this evening to speak out for the high school pool and for keeping it open. The high school pool, um, as you've heard from other speakers tonight uh, and in past meetings, is a force of good here in Martin County and shapes lives, uh, young and retirees, in a very positive way. Uh, that that pool is a much needed and much used community re resource here in Martin County. On weekday mornings, that pool is filled with swimmers. Martin County needs two competitive swimming pools. The Splash Park pool cannot accommodate the swimmers that they have, and the uh, Martin County High School pool, uh, Martin County High School kids. Please keep the high school pool open and accessible to the public and accessible to the general swim community of Martin County uh, during reasonable hours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Heather Rogers. Good evening. This election year, you have the resources and abilities to negotiate a contract with our teachers that will enable them to live here, have affordable health care, and to be respected as the professionals that they are. You have the resources and the abilities to work with Martin County High School to renovate the pool and add classes that are already in our standards. How you choose to handle these responsibilities is entirely up to you. Historically, we know, as your constituents, you rarely vote in favor of students and teachers. You can leave office with the legacies of closing the pool and not supporting teachers and students. You can campaign to remain on this board with the platform of denying teachers a fair contract and closing the pool. Either way, your constituents lose. This all aligns with an agenda from Tallahassee and from supporting extremist groups to end teacher unions, as well as taking up every policy that has been passed to hurt students. Since the last board meeting, the district put out a video about the Martin County High School pool that states it will cost $1.2 million to repair the pool via an in-house bid. In-house bids without budget line items are not acceptable to anyone in our community. As taxpayers, we're requesting to see every line budget item that would indicate we need $1.2 million. Stop swimming against students and teachers. It would be much easier to have the district relations office do a story on how much the pool has brought to our community in the last 40 plus years. As district administrators and elected representatives, it is your duty to support teachers and students. I get the impression that every chance you get, you are collectively hoping the teachers union won't meet its membership quota, continuing to treat them unethically. You are also actively working to close the pool by increasing the rent in July by almost 500%. When you act in the best interest of teachers and students, it shouldn't be in opposition to the public's needs. Perhaps when you are promoted to these positions, you should question if you are truly qualified to be here. Allow the democratic process to work without interference and practice the non-agenda driven disinterest governance governance that is required by all public servants. Thank you. Thank you. Lindley Miller. Last Saturday, I watched my son swim three miles. That was no easy task, took over an hour, but he was coached and trained well. He has a 4.0 GPA, but talking in front of you probably took more effort than that swim. I wanted to express my concern regarding the Martin County High School swim team. What purpose is being solved by making the kids leave by 7 a.m.? Why can't students remain in the classroom supervised until the school opens? This prevents students from walking or driving around, going to Wawa, it's not, isn't it not safer for them to remain in the classroom, to do homework, build team rapport, maybe eat some breakfast. I'm sure that all competitive sports programs have some sort of off season practices or expectations for the athletes. Are these programs limited by the use of the facilities? The facilities department needs to expand the pool management position, not eliminate it. 
because of one bad seed we had. The need for pool manager to facilitate programs is a must. Not just keep the pool clean, but to manage the pool. Set up, facilitate, schedule programs to get the most out of the pool for the community and the district. This should be a focus of the district, not placing limitations and raising the rent in which none of the nonprofits can afford. Programs could be set up for homeschooling, lifeguarding, fire or police training, and physical education. Truly using the pool for PE classroom standards could also be researched. A pool manager could do this. They could also get the district real estimates and bids for the pool. Itemized bids could then be placed into the budget. The pool has been neglected and having someone who knows the pool and able to prioritize repairs would prevent sticker shock. Let's focus on the positives for these kids instead of shutting them out. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Smithson. Hello, Mr. Maine, Madam Chair, and members of the school board. It's me again. <clears throat> Once again, I'm requesting this board to consider your strict interpretation of HB 1069 in favor of a process that meets the needs of all your constituents, not just a few. As you are aware, most laws are ambiguous, and Florida is no exception, and subject to numerous interpretations. The law states books containing sexually explicit material, a parent can request to have the book removed from classrooms and media centers. One way to get around it is to set up a restricted area containing the books that have thus far been banned altogether from our schools. Many of these books have been in our school shelves for years without incident until Moms for Liberty in lockstep with Governor DeSantis create a solution for which there was never a problem. Anyway, those parents object to a particular anyway, those parents who object to a particular book can authorize their child to have access to a non-restricted area of the media center. <clears throat> for the vast majority of parents that don't object to those books uh, banned from our schools, uh, that, uh, the, uh, excuse me, that were banned from the uh, books from our shelves, they can authorize their children and young adults to have full access to the media centers, books which will include a restricted area. Other school districts have done it, and I don't see any evidence of Governor DeSantis closing down those schools or arresting school board members. At this point, I can only assume you are in lockstep with the few at the expense of the many. <clears throat> now, I just want to tell you why I have such a uh, invested interest, <clears throat> excuse me, in this is that, one, I have a grandson <clears throat> at Murray Middle School. I have twin grandkids, a uh, boy and a girl at South Fork in the IB program, and I have three great-grandchildren at Pinewood Elementary. <clears throat> I do not want, as they go through the school system to be denied, you know, uh, any opportunity to learn, especially the experience of others that they can maybe develop an empathy for that speaks to them. I want them to be fully aware, very progressive, et cetera. But the rate that, where we are going now with these banning of the books, all right, is a pure indoctrination in white nationalist Christian creed and dogma. I hate to say that, but that is where we're going, and I would like to see it stop, and maybe some of you up there on the school board can interject some sense into trying to please or accommodate some of us, or actually the majority of us, that don't want to see these books banned. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Victoria Deffenthaler. Victoria Deffenthaler, retired Martin County School District educator and former school board member. I want to thank Mrs. Coleman for speaking up tonight on behalf of all teachers. She's an excellent educator who has touched the lives of many students in our district, including my daughters. I'm struggling to understand how one nonprofit can be a conflict of interest for a school board candidate when we have and have had members of nonprofits on this board for years. I am disappointed for the potential possibilities a school board candidate <clears throat> excuse me, with Dr. Malay's level of education, experience, and expertise could have brought to this school board, which would have, without a doubt, 
benefit our students, teachers, staff, families, and communities. On another note, during the March 19th school board meeting, a presentation around average teacher salaries was conducted. The public was told that there are a number of supplements that, that teachers can receive to enhance their salary. Advanced degrees, the Title I supplement, the Western Zone supplement, to name a few. It was indicated that supplements help to make Martin County teachers' salaries competitive. I believe the presentation led the public to believe that many teachers have the opportunity to receive supplements, which begs the question, why do teachers need to work additional jobs and hours to receive a salary they should receive for serving in their role as qualified teachers? Thank you. Thank you. Dick Landrum. Dick Landrum. I've prepared a handout for you, and I'm going to summarize. The, I'm going to just kind of paraphrase the handout that you're getting right now. And this is in summary uh, of where we stand with the Save the Pool effort. Um, I would like to present these findings so that we won't have to reestablish them again in the next school board's five-year budget planning discussions about the community pool. <clears throat> the pool known as the Coach Dick Wells Training Center belongs to the residents of Martin County. The school district agreed in 1975 it could use the community-funded pool as long as it maintained it. Historically, the pool managers kept the pool facility clean and opened and closed and, uh, for use without incident. The classroom and office um, have always, always been shared by the high school and club teams for storage, education, meetings, social gatherings, and shelter in case of severe weather. Community pools cost money. The ne uh, they need to be used effectively to justify the cost. And the February work order for $1.285 million was not properly bid. It was an internal estimate that was not explained to the board. <clears throat> the pool is a significant capital asset and it should be budgeted using fund accounting over a 20 to 30 year period with no possibility of using the funds for any other purpose. <clears throat> Rental increases imposed on the Martin County Swimming Club are too high and unnecessary as we don't need a full-time custodian. Um, <clears throat> all the rental increases should be on a pro-rate basis, not borne by the only entity using the pool. We have 97 hours available for rental of the pool and we're only using it about 34 of those hours. So any cost that you think you might want to add to the rental of the pool um, need to be considered um, as a pro rate of that amount of time. And <clears throat> we need to restore the pool's use to its original intent and reestablish the programs of community needs. Several are listed um, in, your, in your handout. <clears throat> There should be community pools in each of the six major city areas of Martin County. Perhaps and preferably the school district and county should work together to provide community swim programs for everyone. Other issues um, have come up as we've been listening to your meetings for the last three months and, um, and I, and I want to just say this about some other things that I've heard. You need to pay teachers a Martin County living wage. Affordable housing. <laughs> Everyone working in Martin County should be able to live in Martin County, and they should be able to have to spend no more than 30% of their wages on rent or mortgage fees. You could work with the county and uh, the school district and county should work together to make that happen. Thank you. Katie Spore. I am a uh, kindergarten teacher at Citrus Grove Elementary. Um, I've had the pleasure of teaching in Martin County for eight years. Um, this is my eighth year. And um, I am one of the few people who came from Palm Beach County to teach here. Um, so I do think what I have to say is valuable. Um, I came to Martin County because I wanted to build relationship with my families and students that I was serving. Um, I wanted to be able to go into the grocery store and have parents stop me and say, 
oh, Mrs. Spore, you are my child, you were my child's teacher, or oh, I know you because I'm on the SAC committee with you, or various things like that. Um, last weekend, I stopped by uh, the random Boy Scout uh, car wash, not because I recognized my own student, but because I recognized a coworker student, and they were doing a fundraiser, and I went and did that. That's, that's the feeling of why I came to teach in Martin County. Okay, so um, I was blessed to be married and have a husband and be able to afford to buy a home during COVID. Most people would not be able to get that rate or even uh, maybe find the gem of a house that we have, but I am a taxpayer. And I believe that you should invest money in infrastructure um, because it's useful, right? Um, so I, I was very baffled to see the whole thing about the pool because where I'm from in Michigan, every high school has a pool and we have aquatic centers because everyone wants to go to the pool. So to me, it was very eye-opening that a place surrounded by water did not value that, especially as far as um, swimming lessons are concerned. So to me, I mean, in a place where I lived, in the middle of nowhere, we were taught at in third grade to go to drown proofing class. So for me, that was like a thing that everybody did and you had to do it. Um, so I, I feel like there are ways that you could either figure it out. Um, with Parks and Rec, if you read all of the comments on the Parks and Rec page, it's all about p how people want more pools. Um, as far as pay goes, I really am thankful that you want to give us more money. I know your hands are tied, but I really wish you could figure out how to have the negotiation so sessions go faster. Okeechobee got theirs done in one or two sessions. We could do that. Um, show us, show us teachers that you really do care. Um, that can go a long way. Um, part of, of the pay is an issue, as I don't know how single teachers do it. You have $1,500 for a one-bedroom apartment. I take home $1,600 every two weeks. If I was not married, I could not afford to live here, let alone anywhere near here. So I, I don't know. Uh, figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. Elizabeth Crane. My name's Elizabeth Crane. Thank you, board members. And I so appreciate hearing all the comments. I am here to talk about the policy manual uh, from April 2nd, 2024 workshop, Religion in the Curriculum. And I am a teacher. Uh, I do teach once a week still. And in 1962, when I was in fourth grade, they took prayer out of school. And I have seen our nation decline since that time. I think the, uh, the Declaration of Independence says all we need to say about religion in school when it says we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and they are endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to declare means we can speak freely. And there is a movement to shut down anybody who disagrees with the books that they want to put in. I know for myself, as a child, uh, there was a ice cream truck man who had literature like that and showed it to kids, and you know what happened to him? He was arrested. This is happening in our schools, and parents are okay with it. Some parents are okay with it. I'm not. So I would like to say that the Constitution is an amazing document because it guarantees that the government exists for the benefit of the people. Every other government, the people exist for the benefit of those who rule. That has never gone well for those who are socially engineered on. And that's what's happening in our schools. They call it indoctrination, but it's really social engineering. That's what the schools have turned into. We're not educating our children anymore. So I would like to see religion taught in our schools, God brought back into our schools, a true and living God, 
that I grew up with, and it's made all the difference in my life. And to give children the opportunity to know that they can see that a building has an architect, that we, we see things that are, are built by somebody, but somehow this just happened all by accident. No, to bring the option for children to be able to know that we have a creator. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Amy Robertson? been a while since I heard that name. That's my maiden name. Uh, Amy Robertson Hefnagel here. New building, new board members, new superintendent. Same old story. For decades now, I've experienced firsthand how Martin County values its educators, first as a teacher and now as a parent. It's despicable. I have lobbied at the national and state level. I've met with legislatures, legislators in Tallahassee, and I've negotiated contracts with the union and the board. Even though I had over a decade of teaching experience, my master's degree, and national board certification when I taught, I sat frozen on my step and watched as my pay actually decreased with not so much as a cost of living increase. At one point, I barely made more than a brand new teacher with no experience whatsoever, so I worked more than one job to pay my bills, to pay my rent. Then the years came where so many steps and half steps were added or one-time bonuses offered that did not count toward retirement. It completely skewed the scale for perpetuity. Impasse after impasse at least three times in the past 15 years, and here you are again. Almost the end of the school year, no contract. There's always been a gross disparity in how this county treats its teachers who remain loyal. I don't know why. Teachers who are at the very heart of education, and that's why the retention rate is so pathetic and worse each year. Quality personnel are fleeing to neighboring counties in search of better pay, more appreciation, or even just a settled contract before the year concludes. As a professional, their career should value them accurately and appropriately. Your duty as a school board is to protect the interests of our students, the investment in education for our children, the common obligation of providing an equitable educational environment for our community. If we work together to build a climate where collaboration is the norm, not the exception, then we must properly prioritize our teachers as the professionals they are. Set aside instructional salaries first, not last. Then calculate how much you have left over to spend on whatever else it is you've deemed urgent and important at this time. It's not that the teachers deserve it, which they do. It's not that they've earned it, even though they have. It's just simply what's right and long overdue. As the old adage states, you get what you pay for. I'm not selling out the children of Martin County for less than they deserve. Are you? Show your staff that you value them. S. Sweeney. Please hold your applause. Because you can hear it. Sweeney. My name is Sharita Sweeney, and I'm a bus driver here at Martin County. I identify with the young lady that just spoke, being in transportation. Right now, we're facing uh, trying to get uh, in the process of a new director. From what I understand, the new director that you guys are seeking for is someone that has a master's or a bachelor's degree in, in office. What we need is someone from the outside that has logistic experience, has CDLs, and that has is a people person. You guys uh, put in a box in our lobby saying the, uh, for us to um, put down what we want. We have done that collectively, and it's gonna be titled Bus Drivers and Assistants. Along with that, we are the first ones, like you say, that see, your children, see the children, okay? We don't, we do not feel uh, valued as such. Our pay checks have been messed up repeatedly. We have not seen any retro pay, a lot of us. We have not seen bonuses, okay? Why can't we have a cost of living increase as well? That's, this is something we need. Now we're going into new medical um, 
coverage, uh, an annual enrollment, for me, it's going to cost me $500 a paycheck to get medical coverage. I can't afford that. How am I? And I drive from Palm Beach. I When I came up here, I was so happy and pleased, and I loved it because it's a small community. But let me tell you, it is a lot for us drivers. We are out there on the road. The traffic is getting horrific. They're not building any more new roads, and construction is everywhere. And the other thing I wanted to speak about was you're speaking, I'm so nervous. You're getting a, um, a new compound out in, in, um, in Indian Town. We would like to know what are your intentions on that, on that compound, because we understand that it's gonna only be six hours. I drive from Palm Beach, that compound would be perfect for me because I could just jump on 17 and drive up. What is the purpose of that compound? To put a manager or um, someone permanent out there, it wouldn't, we don't see where it would be good. We need a floating manager and a floating safety from both compounds. And the six hours on a contract is not enough. It's not enough hours. I'm, I don't understand why Martin County, why we have the contract. I understand the union situation, but Palm Beach, their drivers get eight hours. Why can't we get eight hours a day? Okay. Um, oh my goodness, I didn't know I was going to have to. Um, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That concludes public comment, and now we will move on to our action only items. Item number 18.01, school board travel. There's none at this time. Item number 18.02, ITB 1001-2023-2024, enhanced security project purchasing, maintenance, transportation, site proposal pr approval. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval. Thank you. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers and a second by Mr. DiTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 18.03, RFQ number 3006-0-2020, South Fork High School, New Gym Approve FFE proposals. Are there any questions from the board? Yes, Ms. Pritchett? Uh, Mr. Seacrest, it has been floating around that the new gym is smaller than the current gym. Can you elaborate on that so that everyone can hear? Please. So, yeah. So we tried to tackle this about probably 18 months ago because the same rumor was going around. It's larger than the existing gym. It's a hair smaller than Jensen Beach High School. So... It's plus or minus 2,800 people if you do a graduation. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Do I have a motion? Move approval. I have a motion by Mr. DiTerlizzi, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 18.04, RFQ number 3006-0-2020, South Fork High School Project Additional Cost Approval. Are there any questions from the board? Do I have a motion? Move approval. I have a motion by Mr. DiTerlizzi and a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 18.05, RFQ number 3003-0-2017 in A. Stewart Middle School, phase two, replacement building number 10, project builder's risk proposal. Are there any questions from the board? Do I have a motion? Second. I have a motion by Ms. Pritchett and a second by Mr. DiTerlizzi. Are all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> motion carries unanimously. Item number 18.06, Indian Town Bus Compound. Are there any questions from the board? So I just wanted to make, I, th I think that the, Ms. Sweeney, I think it was, it was spoke. I think she brought up a good point about the floating um, position as opposed to having someone full-time in Indiantown. And I know the reason that we 
are putting the buses back in Indian Town is for safety because um, they've had several evacuations where it took well over two hours to get buses um, to Indian Town to evacuate students. So, but I do think that she brought up a really good point about staffing and, um, you know, if if a full time position specifically in Indian Town. So I would like to look at that as um, an an op opportunity to save money as we budget for the coming year. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Roberts. So does that mean we would approve this and then bring it back with an adjustment to it, Ms. Powers, or what do you look? Yes. Well, I think that we're gonna move forward. This is not going to, they need to start work on the infrastructure pieces to have it ready to go for the start right. of school. But yes, I would like at least some sort of explanation on why that is not a good idea. If it, if the superintendent could look at that and, you know, cut, report back to the board on that recommendation, if it is plausible and it's acceptable to do something like that um, to save dollars, I would appreciate that. Right. So this piece that we have today is um, just the capital piece, the infrastructure pieces. So right. um, I'll move approval of this. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Roberts, a second by Ms. Powers. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 18.07, requisitions to be approved for purchase orders over 100,000. Are there any questions from the board? Move, Move approval. approval. Second. I have approval by, or I'm sorry, motion by Mr. DiTerlizzi and a second by Ms. Powers. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 18.08, Summer School Plan 2024. Are there any questions from the board? Um, I'll second that, and I'd like to thank um, Dr. Kennedy for the presentation and the work that was put into this agenda item. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have a motion by Ms. Pritchett, a second by Ms. Roberts. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 18.09, virtual learning program. Are there any questions from the board? Ms. Pritchett? Mr. LaBarbera, if approved, this would start in the 24-25 school year? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I, and I'll second this, and I also want to thank um, both Mr. LaBarbera and Dr. Kennedy for the presentation of this item and all the information that went into it. I really appreciate it. I have a motion by Ms. Pritchett and a second by Ms. Roberts. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 18.10 is the approval of resolution 2024-03, authorizing the issuance of series 2024 refunding certificates of participation. Are there any questions from the board? Yes. Ms. Roberts. Um, so when I'm looking at your preliminary offering statement, I guess I'm talking to Carter, or am I talking to EFM, or am I talking to, I'm not sure who I'm talking to, but um, when I look at your preliminary offering statement and I look at page, page 55, which is the section about the operating revenues of the district and specifically about the local sources. So the language on that last paragraph on page 55, Mr. Morrison, the language that talks about the um, voter approval in August of 22 of the millage should not say what it says. It should say revenues are to be used to fund school safety and security for all schools, or no, school safety and security, mental health programs, recruiting and retaining high qualified teachers and support staff, not the word highly, professional development and academic initiatives. If you look to the language that was approved in August of 22, that's where you would get that language. You're using, I think this is using the language from the prior Things. I think that needs to be corrected in the preliminary office offer. Yes, we will make that correction, Mrs. Roberts. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Okay. And make a motion, a motion to approve with the changes Ms. Roberts mentioned. Second. Second. Okay. I have a motion by Ms. Powers and a second by 
Ms. Pritchett, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We will now recess our regular school board meeting time 5.53 p.m. and we will now call to order the Martin County School Board Leasing Corporation committee meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Mr. DeTerlizzi and a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries unanimously. Item number 3.01. Approval of Resolution 2024-04, authorizing the issuance of Series 2024 refunding certificates of participation. Move approval of 3.01. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Mr. DeTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. This meeting is now adjourned at 5.53, and we will now reconvene our regular school board meeting. Item number... 18.13, AFSCME a non-bargaining, one-time, non-recurring bonus of $790. Are there any questions from the board? I move approval of 18.13. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Mr. DeTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 18.14. 2023-24 non-bargaining salary increase recommendation. Are there any questions from the board? I move approval of item 18.14. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, moving on to our first review of school board policies and to approve the advertising. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak at this time on items 19.01 to 19.11? We do 18.14. Oh, that canceled. Seeing none, we will proceed with our policy advertising approvals. Our first policy is item number 19.01, policy number 2270, religion and the curriculum. Are there any questions from the board? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the advertising? Motion. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Pritchett, a second by Mr. DeTerlizzi. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. I just want to state this is a NEOLA policy update, and its policy has been in effect since July 1 of 2012, possibly even earlier before that under a different number, but, um, and this is NEOLA language. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.02, policy number 2371, Hope Scholarship. Are there any questions from the board? I move approval of the advertising of 19.02. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.03, policy number 2455, Dropout Prevention and Academic Interve Intervention Programs. This is a new policy. Are there any questions from the board? I move approval of 19.03 advertising. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.04, policy number 2460, Exceptional Student Education. Are there any questions from the board? Of 19. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Pritchett, a second by Ms. Powers. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.05, policy number 2520, selection and adoption of instructional materials. Are there any questions from the board? Seeing Move none, approval of 19.05 advertising. Thank you. Second. Oh. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.06, policy number 2521, instructional materials program. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval of the advertising of 19.06. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Mr. DeTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.07, policy number 2522, challenges to adoption of use of instructional, library, or reading list materials. Are there any questions from the board? Of 
motion. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Pritchett, a second by Mr. DiTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.08, policy number 2623, student assessment. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval of the advertising of 19.08. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.09, policy number 5420, reporting student progress. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval of the advertising of 19.09. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.10, policy number 8420, Emergency Management, Emergency Preparedness, and Emergency Response Agencies. Are there any questions from the board? Second. I have a motion by Ms. Pritchett, a second by Ms. Powers. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 19.11, policy number 8600, transportation. Are there any questions from the board? I have a motion. Motion to approve second. 19.11. I have a motion by Ms. Pritchett, a second by Mr. DiTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Moving on to public hearing of school board policies. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak on any of these policies? Seeing none, we will move forward. Item number 20.01. Policy number 1242 and 3242, professional learning. Are there any questions from the board? Yes. Yes, Ms. Roberts? So for 1242 and 3242, uh, Ms. Falls, I think there's a Scribner's error on line two. After consortia, that and should be removed. Since you have an and after organization, it doesn't change the content, so I don't think it's an issue, but just for both of those policies. 1242 and 3242. So I move approval with that change. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Roberts, a second by Mr. DiTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 20.02, policy number 2120, school improvement. Okay, well, Are there any questions from the board? Yes, she, oh. For the first one, she did. Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions on this one? Um, he was asking about public comment. For this one. I move approval of 20.02. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Mr. DiTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 20.03, policy number 5111.01, .01, homeless students. Are there any questions from the board? Thank you. I have one. Yes, Ms. Roberts. Um, this is also a Scribner's error or a correction on page two of eight. The last, um, the very last line above what's stricken, Ms. Falls, that should be A through C above instead of A through D since we struck D. Right? No substantial change, so I think it's. And I'll move approval. I have a motion by second. Ms. Roberts and a second by Mr. DiTerlizzi. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 20.04, policy number 5410, student progression. Are there any questions from the board? Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion by Mr. DiTerlizzi, a second by second. Ms. Pritchett, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. Item number 20.05, policy number 5410.01, promotion, acceleration, placement, and retention. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval of 20.05. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 
Item number 20.06, policy number 5460, graduation requirements. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval of 20.06. Second. Thank you. Um, I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Mr. DiTerlizzi was not here for that vote, so if you could. Thank you. Item number 20.06, policy number 5460, graduation requirements. Wait, did we just, we just did oh. that? Never mind. Just kidding. Let me move on. <laughs> so you're paying attention. It's good. Um, item number 20.07, policy number 5465, general education development GED tests. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval of 20.07. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? A motion carries order zero. Item number 20.08, policy number 5513, care of school property. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval of 20.08. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Item number 20.09, policy number 5710, student and parent complaints. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval uh, of 20.09. I have any questions? Do you have a question? I just want to be sure that we're, um, that somebody's noted that it's going to be published on the district's website and they'll be notified by the process through email and or mail. I'm sure that everybody's caught that, right? Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so I had a motion by Ms. Powers, second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Item number 20.10, policy number 5780, student parent rights. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval of 20.10. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers and a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Item number 20.11, policy number 5782, parent guardian notification and permission, school-sponsored events and activities. Are there any questions from the board? Of I have a motion okay. by Ms. Pritchett and a second by Ms. Powers. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Item number 20.12. Policy number 8410.01, critical incident response. This is a new policy. Are there any questions from the board? Move approval of 20.12. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Powers, a second by Ms. Pritchett. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, next up is open to the board. Mr. DiTerlizzi, did you have anything this evening? Thank you, Madam Chair, I do, yes. So I know it's coming up on silly season, and uh, I, I guess we all know what that is. But there's some things said tonight from some members of the public that I don't believe are correct, and they might just be um, part of silly season. But somebody mentioned that we went to impasse uh, three times in the last 15 years. I've been sitting on this board 12 years. In my first year, we were forced to go to impasse because the district had no money. and. There's not been any impasse since then. There's been raises or bonuses every single year since then. And uh, I think we pretty much stepped up to the plate pretty well this year. It's obvious that maybe they're not happy with it, but um, it was an awful lot of money. So I'd like uh, Mr. Maine to please um, talk about that. And um, also, I think the public needs to understand a little bit more about our donor county status, because people seem to think we have all this extra money and all this extra money, but it's to the tune of tens of millions of dollars that of the public's tax dollars that goes to other counties. We have no control over it. The state legislature um, or the Florida Department of Education um, has this program that takes our money and sends it elsewhere. 
Well, and not, I think we give more than Dade County gives to the donor program, which is really ridiculous. I just want to clarify that we do not, our money does not leave our county. That is a misnomer. The money collected in Martin County stays here. The, now, the money we get to um, from the state mm -hmm. may be less than, say, a rural county in the panhandle that doesn't have the tax base. But every dollar that we collect here in Martin County stays here. It's only offset by what we get from Tallahassee. So we get less because our tax base is higher than, say, Jackson County. Right. So I just I just that. wanted to clarify that because that is something that I hear a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's that's just how the process works. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bowers. Um, and uh, Mr. Main, one more thing. Um, I'd like to know how many times negotiations were delayed since we began negotiations with the teachers union and who caused those delays? Because I think there's some misinformation out there on that also. Thank you, that's all I have right at the moment. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Um, sure. So last month I spoke at the Rotary. Um, I'd like to congratulate Martin County for their fire rescue training facility. Thank the tax collector for the tag art opportunity in that event and also thank Mark Cowles for his work on that event. Congratulate Stewart Middle School for their first successful Italian night. Thank and congratulate Palm City Elementary for their Odyssey of the Mines and Earth Day celebration, which was very well attended by the community and the parents like to um, remind anybody who's listening that next Tuesday from 5 to 8, the Jensen Beach Chamber will be having their art music auction event at the mall, the Treasure Coast Mall, which will be showcasing the music art um, for the students from Jensen Beach Elementary, Felix Williams, Stewart Middle School, and Jensen Beach High School. Um, next Friday, April 26th, is the Jensen Beach High School Talent Show. May 10th is the South Fork High School band performance. May 14th, Jensen Beach High School is having a Jubilate performance. And I'd like to wish good luck to SPAM that's heading to Houston for the World Championship. They um, won their divisionals a couple times, so managed to get the free ticket to get, go there instead of having to pay that entry fee. And I wish them the best of luck. And one last thing I wanted to bring up was the, um, so I, I don't know if you all caught it, but um, the city of Stewart voted to have a presentation that had to do with affordable housing, um, and somebody's working on a presentation that they're giving to the city of Stewart about that. But one of the things that was interesting was that if you take the numbers, it's it's based on 80% of the um, your annual income in your area, your AMI. And 80% in our area has an income cap of $51,360 for one person. So using that number, um, even though we're, people are always thinking, well, this is going to be something that's great for teachers, it's something that 80% of the AMI with an annual income of $51,360 with a starting salary, a minimum starting salary in Martin County for a teacher with no years of experience being $49,500 and then adding the millage onto that of the 1800 if you had no years of experience. If you add the 1800 that puts you at 51.3. So you're $60 short. So as long as you're not in a title school, don't receive any other supplement, um, you might be able to qualify for that. But it probably isn't a program that's going to do a whole lot for anybody that's a teacher, just so that um, everybody kind of knows that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pritchett? Thank you. Ms. Powers? Um, so I just had a couple of things. Um, I know there were a few of us that attended the Jackie Robinson Youth Baseball Tournament. Um, it was the groundbreaking of the new sort of in, in collaboration with the celebration um, was the new Hidden Oaks Fields, and they are spectacular. They are really, really nice, and it's amazing what... Um, that partnership and the investment that not the school district but private businesses made into that those fields for our students and it's it's really spectacular and there were um, teams from all over the Treasure Coast area attending it was it was a really nice event um, also I wanted to congratulate spam I think that um, it spam was a, a great investment 
um, on our part as a school board and um, the what they're doing and what they're learning and what they're giving back to our community when they leave and they get their STEM degree and come back and volunteer in the program is just invaluable. So um, congratulations to them. I look forward to seeing how far they go in Houston. Now, there were a lot of questions that came up tonight about the pool. Um, and just to clear, the pool is remaining open for at least this, this school year the, or the coming school year. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we get information out. I don't believe that we as a board have, um, approved increasing any use of facilities fees. So I just want to clarify that to the public that what our use of facilities are when that was approved and, you know, what the implementation looks like. Um, because I don't believe that we've raised the rent. I just don't know how the, what the implementation process was before. So we need to clarify that. Um, affordable housing and uh, teacher pay, which Ms. Roberts touched on. Um, and then Mr. Teacher Lisi mentioned, I know for a fact, uh, we haven't been to impasse three times in 15 years. I, it's, I know we've only been once since I've been on the board, and it was when the school district, we, Mr. DiTerlizzi and I came on the board and we were in a in dire financial um, situation. We Our fund balance had dropped below the state required 3%, and we had to make some really tough decisions, tough decisions that um, impacted every employee, not just, um, not just our teachers, but every single employee. Um, gave something up while we were going through that process and rebuilding our fund balance. So um, I just wanted to make that clear. And then there was also a comment made about retro pay that hasn't been paid to ask me. Do we know where we are with... Yeah. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, <clears throat> members of the board, community. The AFSME raises have been implemented into the system as you are aware, or may be aware, that our system does not allow, allow for a lump sum payment. Um, if we, were, we could do it, but it would, it's very manual. And with the AFSME bargaining unit of little over seven, 800, I believe, it would be very risky. So what the system does is that it then spreads out the uh, retro portion over the, the number of remaining paychecks. So that's why they didn't get a lump sum payment, but they are getting a retro. So I guess that's more of an education process for the employees so that they understand what, in the end, what what their increase is going to look like. Um, I'm sure that what maybe we just need to have a refresher and remind people and get, get the calculations out to them because I know they, they, they need to see it and they need to understand it clearly. Um, so did we send an email to all of the Ask Me people to tell them that this is your, this is how it's being handled, Mr. Morrison? I, I can check on that for you, Mrs. Roberts. I'm not sure if we did that or not, but I can check on that. We need to put that in our work process thing because I think that's something we need to do otherwise. Well, and I guess, too, if we're going to have a, a, a similar situation with uh, all of our employees that are going to be getting retro pay this year, I think we just need to explain how that's going to work. Uh, obviously, the timing is going to be different for Ask Me versus um, non-bargaining versus um, MCEA. Um, so we need to educate them on how the process is going to work and what it's going to look like. And then there was also one comment made about bus drivers in Palm Beach County getting eight hours a day. Is that a standard? Like, how? what... I would like to understand that, how, I don't know, I don't know if it's something that they just pay a minimum of eight hours regardless or what that looks like, if it's a 40-hour week, how, you know, maybe we can look into that and see how they do that and what, what they do, or if they're actually in a bus eight hours a day, I guess. Thank okay. you. Superintendent Maine, did you have anything? Uh, yes, ma'am. To Mrs. Power's point, uh, there will be a information coming forward to the board with a request to move to eight hours. Um, that is something that will be forthcoming. 
uh, to the board as our staff puts that information together. Um, I just want clarification from our staff. I know that there was conversation uh, that we had had in reference to making sure that a memo went out to all AFSCME employees uh, explaining the raises, and I do believe we received communication back from Lisa Edwards that that communication was very well received and that they appreciated that communication, uh, but maybe I'm, I'm mistaken on that if, that if that communication did not get pushed out. I know that we had heard from a few employees that appreciated the fact that that they understood and that our um, payroll department has gone out to the bus compound and has met with uh, employees to go over their uh, checks and to answer questions individually that they may have. So I know that there have been steps to do that. I, we absolutely will push out additional communication. We realize that many of those drivers do not check their email uh, or have email access. And so a, we pushed to move forward with a memo uh, that went out to employees that was pushed out from the transportation department. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I, yes. It was, I, I pulled it up in my email. It was sent uh, to all AFSCME employees on February 22nd. Um, all teammates and the raises were um, explained and also explained about how the applicable retro pay and how that would be spread over the employees' remaining paychecks. Um, but it, again, if you'd like us, we could actually put this in their mailboxes. Please um, do. Down in transportation, yeah. but it, it was articulated um, to them in an email that went and it went to electric executive leadership principals as well. So, um, it so appears were they it given? Wasn't, so, Sessa, were they yes. given the amounts, or were they just said these are going to be spread out, or were they given an individualized thing that said your amount? Did we do a merge that says your amount of X number of dollars is being spread over the rem remainder? This was a group email, so I'm not aware of any other. Do we have the ability to send a personalized email to every person <laughs> and ask me that says, this is the amount of your, we want you to know, this is the amount of your increase, and this is being spread out over that period of time, so that then at least they kind of, because otherwise, I, I mean, how do you even keep track of, if I'm the employee, how do I even know what it is that you gave me, right? I understand. I'd probably work with Mr. Morrison and the payroll team to put that together. Uh, and as Mr. Main mentioned, that um, every Thursday after the payroll, we do go down to the bus compound, and we have two members of my staff who meet with every bus driver and answer any questions that they may have and walk them through what the increase is on the change of the contract and how their paycheck will be affected going forward. Uh, I'll have to see if we have the capability to do that mail merge that you're suggesting. And, and I'm concerned because we don't just have Ask Me employees at, at the um, bus compound. We have them throughout the district. So we're answering one question, but we're not answering it for everyone. I think, Mrs. Roberts, it would be... Um, fair to say that any employee that uh, would needs to come down to the district office or needs assistance one-on-one -on -one with with personal payroll matters would definitely have access to staff to do that. Uh, in the past, we've just received a significant number of our questions that have come from the transportation department in lieu of other departments as we've polled them, and so that we that's the point of sending an individual staff member or two directly to the compound. Other um, personnel that are non-bargaining related are able to get those questions oftentimes answered by their principal or an assistant principal that's well aware of uh, how those raises are broken out over the remaining checks, and so it's resolved at the local school level or department level versus transportation. And I appreciate that happening at the bus compound, and I understand that. My concern is that if I'm a principal at um, Bessie Creek and my custodian says to me, how much is my raise? I'm not sure that that answer is coming correctly or whether she has access to say, oh, let me look it up on a chart or any of that other kind of thing. But I would think that, and instead of expecting the employee to then, well, you can pick up the phone and you can call here and then you can leave a message and then they'll call back and then they're going to walk you through it. And then, you, you know, I just think it would be, if there's some way we can communicate with them and, and say, I mean, maybe by email, you know, I mean. We have an email. Do they have email? Um, there's an email I was just sent from Ms. Sessa mm -hmm. regarding what was sent to the employees 
So would I be able to tell if I was a custodian at Bessie how much my raise was? Well, it says here that um, the ratified agreement includes a 4% raise for all AFSCME bargaining unit eligible members. AFSCME members that are unit uh, eligible members above the top step will receive a 3% increase in addition to the 4% previously mentioned for a total of 7%. Then it says in very black letters, bold letters, applicable retroactive pay will date back to July 1, 2023, and we will be spread out over the employee's remaining checks for the current fiscal year. Eligible employees will receive their updated biweekly pay and their paychecks by the end of March 24. Oh, that's great. Then it looks like it's being handled sufficiently. Thank you, Ms. Thank Sessa. you for that information. <laughs> um, I, I did. I'm, I don't want to belabor this meeting. I just did have a couple of follow-up points, uh, if I can. Board Chair, thank you. So, uh, just to stay with the with the bus drivers, um, we are over twenty one dollars an hour, and. Um, just want the public to be aware that the Martin County School District led the charge in increasing bus driver pay uh, through the advocacy of the transportation director and our staff uh, and the board uh, obliged and approved to put Martin County as one of the top paid school districts in the state of Florida for bus driver pay. Uh, because we led that charge, there have been several school districts to push to catch up to us, but we are still uh, within the 12 county tri area, the highest paid district for bus drivers uh, and I know that the board will continue to commit to AFSCME employees and, and raising salaries each year as the budget allows. As far as the theme for tonight I'm just thinking fiscal responsibility. Fiscal responsibility across the board um, as a school board and as a superintendent. I know that on the decisions that we make behind closed doors that the public is not always privy to always comes first and foremost with, with fiscal responsibility in mind to the taxpayers of Martin County. I want everybody to understand that FTE dollars, meaning every student that we have in the district, comes with a dollar amount that is allotted to us by the state. And we do everything we can with that those dollars to make sure that the school district is running as efficiently as possible and we are meeting the needs of all of our students and all of our stakeholders within the district and that includes raises for all of our staff. So when we look at making sure that we're transparent, I would invite anyone again to continue monitoring and keeping in contact with us. Everything that we do from the decisions that we make are clearly in sunshine, clearly in the public, clearly posted on our district website. And I would also say that all bargaining sessions that we have with the MCEA and or AFSCME are recorded, are recorded and posted on our website. You can watch all of them. I also want to just clarify, um, the audience has obviously left and this is not a tit for tat back and forth with our teachers. There's not a single person in this room or on this board, and I'm speaking solely for myself, but I know that they're committed, that believes that our teachers, and I shouldn't just say teachers, as superintendent, all staff within the school district, all staff, not just teaching staff, not just secretaries, but all of our uh, employees that work for the district deserve higher wages, and we understand that but we can only do so much with the dollars that we have to make sure, again, that we are fiscally responsible. Uh, if you look to our county to the south, Broward County just made mention of having to ask their board to rescind raises that they were giving to their staff because of the loss of ESSER and ARP dollars that significantly impact the district's financial stability and stand. That will never happen in Martin County because you have a board of elected officials that are, that are doing their due diligence to make sure that myself and all of the employees that are in this district and in this room are doing what they can to make sure that where we say we will spend our money is exactly where we are spending our money. Nothing more, nothing less, and you will continue to get that under my leadership as superintendent and with my work with the school board. We will not put ourselves in a situation where we would have to ask to rescind raises. Therefore, the money that is on the table and the raises that our staff are receiving, we have 100% confidence that we are able to pay our bills, pay our employees, and be responsible to the public of the Martin County uh, community. I would ask the teachers in the audience to ask their president 
why we delay or oftentimes are not able to move negotiations forward at the rate in which we would like to see negotiations move forward. And that is because the union has only agreed to meet once per month, no more or no less, uh, no earlier, I should say, no sooner, once per month, and they do not agree to meet over the summertime. So I would encourage that if they're interested in meeting this summer, to begin contract negotiations for 24-25, we would be more than willing to start that process uh, as soon as they are ready. And um, we're, re we're open, we're open to that. So once a month is when we meet, and oftentimes some, there are times where they are canceled for one reason or another. Again, if you'd like to know who's canceled those meetings, uh, they're posted on our website and you will see. I had a labor relations meeting that was scheduled with the union um, just last week. That meeting was canceled by the union president uh, to meet with me to discuss further process of moving forward in our relations from teachers uh, to, to the district. We are one team. We are not separated by anything that we do. We work together collaboratively, not in isolation. We have over 1,300 teachers in this district, of which only 25 or 30 were represented here tonight, which appear to be the largest, uh, the loudest voice. We receive emails and communication weekly and daily from teachers that are fully supportive of the job that we are doing and the work that the board is doing, and they understand our responsibility as a district to make sure that we are being fiscally responsible. Um, there was a lot said here tonight that was not true. We're working very, very hard on behalf of all employees in this district to make sure that we're moving forward in the direction that we know our students deserve. And I, with that, I will leave it there, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Superintendent Maine. If there are no further comments from anyone on the board, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.